Hey guys, Spud here, as always. And yesterday I was invited to and attended an early screening of Top Gun Maverick. So yes, you read that title right. Today we are going to be reviewing the new Top Gun Maverick. I was so excited to finally see it on the big screen and I definitely wanted to give you my thoughts about the movie. So I'll try to be as spoiler free as possible. Now before we get started with the review, let's talk about our sponsors for this video. Thrustmaster, because of Top Gun Maverick, is running an awesome special on their T-Flight HOTAS systems. There's going to be a lot of folks who are now going to be interested in military aviation and combat flight simulation, and the T-Flight HOTAS is going to be a very affordable way to get into the combat flight simulation space and enjoy all that the DCS FA-18C Hornet has to offer. Because when you fly the crappy Hornet in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you miss 95% of what makes the FA-18 Hornet special. Our other sponsor today, of course, is Fox 3 Managed Solutions. The amazing, immaculate, complex, and amazingly fun missions that we fly on the Spud Spuds Discord server would not be possible without the honkin' servers over there at Fox 3 Managed Solutions. So thank you, Luck, and definitely go out and check out Fox 3 if you or your group are in need of a DCS World server. Discount codes and links are going to be pinned in the comment section down below, guys. Over the next week or two, we're going to be delving into the mission that was depicted in Top Gun Maverick in DCS World, trying to recreate it to the best of our ability in the DCS FA-18C Hornet, and analyze whether or not what happened in the mission uh, is possible or not. Most of it isn't, just a little spoiler there. So let's go ahead and get started with the review. So I'm sure I am preaching to the choir here of aviation geeks if you are watching a DCS World YouTuber like myself. And so as a result, it was an absolute pleasure to be invited to and attend an early screening of Top Gun Maverick. It is truly going to become another piece of aviation history and another pop culture icon here in the United States and most likely around the world. It is probably not going to be as influential on pop culture and on aviation as a whole as the original Top Gun movie was, and I think that we'll kind of cover that later on as we get into more specifics about what I liked and didn't like about the movie. However, I am so, so glad that my first time seeing this movie was on the big screen. Tom Cruise was absolutely correct in his stating that he did not want it to be released directly to streaming, and it had to be released in the movie theaters. The two-year wait due, the, due to the coronavirus was absolutely worth the wait, guys. You are going to love this movie and love the experience of going to see this movie if you are a fan of aviation, you're a fan of the military, and just like Tom Cruise said, I think it really comes across in this movie that it really is a love letter to aviation, military aviation, and all facets of aviation. Because we know that Tom Cruise, of course, is a pilot himself, and it really, really comes across in the movie making, the characters, their acting, the cinematography, everything just really screams exactly what Tom Cruise promised, a love letter to aviation. Now, there's a couple reasons why I think it's not going to be at, quite as influential as the original movie. So let's talk about the positives first before we get into the negatives about this movie. There are many positives and there are a few negatives, so just go ahead and bear with me here. We'll try to keep this video as short as possible. The cinematography of the movie was absolutely amazing. The aerial shots of the FA-18s shot from the Cinejet L-39s and from onboard cameras on board the FA-18s was absolutely stunning and breathtaking. It was, it's probably going to go down as the most amazing air-to-air -air and in-cockpit cinematography ever made for any movie, bar none. In fact, I would really, really love if they released a compilation or a documentary of all of the aerial shots made for the movie, but in their non-edited form, unedited raw, before they go to that cutting room floor to be put into the movie itself. The 
And this is part of the reason why it really is that love letter to aviation, just like Tom Cruise said. There literally could not have been anyone better suited to make this movie other than Tom Cruise and his love of flying, which, like I said, really comes through and is definitely one of the biggest high points of the movie. And it really is a spectacle, guys. There's, it's, there's a kind of a separation between the spectacle of the movie and the actual... Eh, let's silence this guy. The spectacle of the movie and the experience of seeing it. And eh, we're going to turn it off, actually. So, the spectacle of the movie, of course, is it's Top Gun, right? It's amazing, it's a beautiful movie, it's obviously made to be made for the big screen and whatnot. But uh, the actual movie itself, I in the storyline, I think, needed a little bit of work. It wasn't my favorite storyline. In my opinion, what made the original Top Gun movie kind of awesome is how simple the storyline is. When you follow the storyline of the original Top Gun, it's very, very bare bones simple. The, there's pilots on a cruise and they have an encounter with a MiG. They come home after that cruise and they get sent to Top Gun. They graduate from Top Gun. They go out on another cruise to, you know, ha uh, help quell a crisis. You know, most likely the Gulf of Sidra incident, if you wanted to kind of bring it to my more real world incident that's being depicted. And then the pilots engage in combat against this mock uh, or fictional enemy, which is probably meant to represent the Libyans. And so it is very, very simple and very, very easy for the plot to be very, very focused on the aviation bits um, of the movie. And because it's just simple, because the storyline in Top Gun Maverick is a lot more complex and nuanced, it kind of almost feels a way, like it takes away from some of the realism of the storyline itself as a result. And so you kind of have to have a little bit more of a suspension of belief when it comes to the storyline. And because the storyline is so much more complex, the movie felt rushed, in my opinion starting from even the opening credits of that iconic recreation of that iconic scene of the deck of the aircraft carrier at the beginning of the original Top Gun. Of course, this time with F-35s and Super Hornets. And so it felt like every scene in the movie was two thirds the length that it felt like they should be. Everything seemed rushed. Dialogue seemed rushed. Shots of aircraft seemed rushed. Shots of pilots playing in the sand at the beach, you know, playing football seemed rushed. Shots of Maverick with his love interest seemed rushed. Everything about the movie seemed rushed because they were trying to take this very elaborate story and push it together to allow for it to be fit into the, you know, two-ish hour time frame that most movie goers will sit in a movie theater for. So that was kind of my main criticism about it. And then my second criticism, which really hit me a lot harder than that first one, was the music. The music in Top Gun Maverick does not in any way, shape, or form live up to the music that is in the first Top Gun movie. I, this was, I was actually quite disappointed by the soundtrack. It, the soundtrack, of course, you know, had the Top Gun riffs, the Top Gun anthem. It had Kenny Loggins reprising uh, Highway to the Danger Zone for one scene at the beginning of the mission, or one scene at the beginning of the movie, I should say, and then it was never used again. There was a One Republic song that was kind of supposed to be a replacement for playing with the boys from Kenny Loggins, and it just did not sound Top Gun at all. And at the end of the movie, there's a Lady Gaga song, that good song, and I've always been a fan of Lady Gaga, but it just was not Top Gun. There was no guitar riffs, there was no rock, there was no upbeat rock and drums. It was all, you know, kind of that Michael Bay, like, symphony, like, orchestra kind of, like, suspense movie kind of, you know, uh, drums, violins, and trumpets kind of situation, rather than just the, the, the playful, almost silly guitar riffs of the upbeat rock of the original movie. And that was the biggest letdown for me when it came to watching Top Gun Maverick. Because as a pilot and as an aviation geek, I knew that I had to suspend my belief for 
things like weapons employment and mission profiles and things of that nature. But the other things that kind of helped to soften that in the original movie eh, weren't really present as much in this movie. Um, but again, the cinematography of the flying sequences of the jets and things like that was absolutely very cool, absolutely breathtaking. Some of the best, I think, ever. And honestly, I think that probably ever will be. I don't see anyone coming back and topping Top Gun Maverick. It probably will never happen again. So it is a spectacle to behold for sure. Um, so like I said, guys, over the next couple weeks here, we're going to be delving into and trying to recreate as much as we possibly can about the sortie and the mission that were, missions that were depicted in the movie and try to recreate them here in DCS world to the best of our ability and analyze why it can't be done, why it can be done, and hopefully make some awesome content for you guys and hopefully uh, generate some revenue for our sponsors, uh, Fox 3, of course, and Thrustmaster. But uh, don't let my criticisms get you down, guys. Absolutely, 100%, if you are a fan of aviation or military aviation or the military in general, you have to go see the movie in the theaters. Uh, don't let my criticisms get you down. Um, you, you just got to go see it. It's a fantastic, fun experience. And I can't wait to go see it again in the theaters, to be honest, even with my criticisms. Um, but man, that uh, lack of a good soundtrack really, really hit me hard. It didn't feel like Top Gun because of that lack of an awesome soundtrack. So that's my biggest, biggest complaint about it. But everything else about the movie was great. The eh, storyline was a little rushed, a little too complicated, I think. But uh, it was great. Um, it's just uh, kind of cheesy awesomeness that we know from the first movie. So we'll see you in the next one, guys. And of course, fly safe out there and uh, enjoy this movie when you go see it. And uh, definitely check out the promotion from Thrustmaster down in the uh, comments section down below. Hopefully I don't get called a shill too much.